That's good. There we ah. go. Ah, praise God. Well, you know, uh, just, so, just so everybody knows that, that these videos are on YouTube. Identity to Destinies, like what's at the top of your paper there. You can search, you can find them. You can go back and re-listen, whatever. And, um, and I would just say that, you know, I, I kind of watched the last one when I posted it. And um, what are you guys still doing here? <laughs> you know? I guess it's that you watch yourself and you go, what? You know? But then when I don't watch myself and I listen, I go, that's a good message. Mm -hmm. That is really a good message that needs to just get out there for real. Um, it can change. If this message got out, it's going to change everything. It's going to be a wave that affects everything. All right, so this is um, we're identity to destiny three. Thank you guys, keep coming back. Um, and so for a quick, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a quick recap. Ah, uh, everybody just take a deep breath. Oh, thank you, Papa. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this time, Jesus. We thank you for inviting us to what you are doing tonight, and we get to participate in this with you. Clear our minds, our hearts, our distractions. Let us let go of everything that we're holding on to. Be the light in our darkness. And just help us to comprehend, understand, let I am speak to I am in us. And just let it resonate and be who we are. That we can begin to see the truth of our identity. Thank you. Praise you. We honor you with all that we are. Through Christ, amen. 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 Okay, oh, I was going to do this earlier, and I didn't do this. But, okay, here we go. Right, this is not very good, accurate drawing. Donuts. <laughs> Little sprinkles, and you got it. <laughs> it changed. as the chocolate frosting. <laughs> Okay, so um, I know that's, that's not a very good drawing at all, but um, used to take these things and put them on my phonograph player with the little disc, right? yeah. yeah, the records, and so <laughs> it's a little 45, right, a little yeah. 45 record, and so now when they, when they record, when they originally started recording phonographs, it was the tube that recorded onto wax. It would re pick up the sound and it would start making vibrations on the wax and it would record on the wax. Huh. This looks like I am not, right? Mm -hmm. You have been recording since before you were born. When you were conceived, you have been recording. This has been recording. Your whole life has been recording on the vinyl of your soul. So, your life has been recorded. So there are things that have been recorded on your life that are joyous and there are things that have been recorded that have been hurtful, painful. That's where we get the I am nots. That's where it started. Remember I talked last week about the I am nots. I said it, it starts in the womb. I said you could be, uh, you know, in, in first grade and somebody makes fun of your haircut because your mom was trying to cut your hair, she didn't do a very good job, and you go to school and they're making fun of your, well, let me just tell you about me, all right? I'll just talk about me. So growing up, money was tight, and so it was time for school, you got two outfits. You got two pairs of pants, two shirts. Wow, you were rich. I know, but you get to school, you get to school, and we didn't go to second hand. I didn't have an older brother for hand-me-downs. I didn't have hand-me-downs to go into. So what did I have? Two shirts to go to school. You try to mix and match, you try it every other day, but they pick up on that. And they start going, oh look, he's wearing the same shirt again. Is that the only shirt you have? Well, that hurts. You know, so boom. So there we go. There is a mark on the vinyl of my soul. Mm -hmm. When I was young, uh, another time, um, I think I was like second grade maybe, um, I had two younger sisters, and uh, my stepdad 
having an affair. So my mom, I went to my friends, I played with my friends, I get a call from my stepdad, said you need to come home right now. I thought, okay. So I come home and he tells me that my mom left. My mom took off. And she took my sisters and she left. This is my stepdad. This wasn't even my real dad. This is my stepdad. And so I was kind of devastated with that. And at that point, I remember in me going, I can't trust adults. I can't trust them. I have got to make it on my own because I put my trust in my mom to be there and she abandoned me with my stepdad. And I do call it abandonment. A few days later, she came back. I remember this. I was asleep. I remember hearing the commotion in the living room. She came back to get clothes. And she was going to take off again. But I started putting up a fit about, I want to go, I want to go. I'm crying, I want to go. And she's like, go get your shoes. And she was mad. I had to go get my shoes. I couldn't find one of my shoes. And I'm crying trying to find my shoes because if I don't find it quick, she's going to take off again. And so I couldn't find my other shoe. And so finally she got mad and she said, I'll just stay then. So then it was my fault that she had to stay. So, recorded on the vinyl of my soul, I'm responsible for my mother's happiness now. That's my responsibility. Since second grade, she stayed because of you. You better make sure that she's happy. So I spent my whole life trying to compensate and make sure that she was okay and happy. No matter what, above and beyond everything, always overcompensating. You wonder why I'm so anal on things. That's why. Always trying to make sure it's happy. But see, I am not, right? The I am not. I am not adequate. I wasn't adequate. I wasn't enough for my mom to stay. Clothes were, but I wasn't. That's how it happens. And it just happens, and it happens, and it happens, and it happens, and every corner you turn, there's another chance for it to happen. It just keeps happening. They're there whether we know that they are there or not. It's like this. It's like when you put on a pair of glasses, whether they be prescription or sunglasses or whatever kind of glasses you put on, when you put on glasses, you do not see the glasses, but everything you see looks different. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the I am not. You may not see the I am not, but you see everything else different because of them. Those are your I am not glasses that you put on. And it started since we were little. It starts in the womb, it starts. If you have parents that fought and bickered a lot, you felt that in the womb. That became an instability in your house, in your life. You didn't know what was going on, but you knew that there was unrest. You maybe came out and said, you know, I I'm not loved. If you had parents that were, you know, whatever, that didn't pick you up when you cried because that's what they were told by the doctor, that that's what you're supposed to let them. Don't pick them up. You're going to spoil them. you got to let them cry it out. And, and you're crying it out, and you hear Satan, or Satan, the accuser, whispering in your ear, see, you're not loved. You're not important. You're not loved. And it is writing on the vinyl of your soul. And it just keeps writing. And it just keeps going. If we could get this message to people to understand that this is going on, and it needs dealt with, it can change everything. Because out of your innermost being, we're going to get into a little bit, flowing the rivers of living life, the living water. That's, that's the life that's in you that's coming out. But we filter it through the I am not. So, as I've been walking this journey for this past four or five years, and I've been learning this, and I walk the trail, every time or any time, and here's a way to tell if you're, I have a friend, Bob, and uh, I was sharing all this with him way back at the beginning stages when I started to walk through it. And about the I am nots, you know, and he named off a few right off in his life. Boom, boom, boom. A teacher that made, that made him feel small. Boom, you know. Well, you, you, you must be stupid because you can't read. Boom. There's I am nots. You're, you know, he was afraid to get up and talk in front of crowds because of the I am nots that were put on him at a young age. So he was afraid of it. 
So we were talking, and boom, he's, he's there laughing for you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we <laughs> met him the next week, because we'd meet once a week to just uh, dump on him all the things I'm exploring. And he goes, yeah, I, I think I'm done with the I am not. I think I've made it through them. I said, well, it's not quite noon yet. So, uh, <laughs> but when you're walking, when you are living life, every time you think back, why did I react that way? Every time you catch yourself looking back at something you've done and you go, why, why was I that way? Why did I act that way? Why did I react that way? Why was that so painful? Why was I so afraid to do that? Every time you have that why on something inside of you is going, check, that wasn't quite right. You know, check, 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 that's not quite right. Every time that is a check, that is an I am not. That is a hurt. That is a wound. That is something that's needing dealt with. And so I would catch things. I go, oh, why did I do that? And sometimes it's the next day. Sometimes it was right then. And I would just start saying, okay, all right, Pop, I just, just heal that. What was that? What caused that? And heal that. And sometimes he would show me what caused it. So I could go to that point and go, oh, okay, bring healing. And I can guarantee you, every time Jesus was there with me, every time, doesn't matter what you're going through, he is there with us when we go through it. And sometimes, wouldn't show me anything. Just heal it. Because there are times when he shows us, when we have the image of what it was that hurt us, when we see that image, even though we forgot about it, we had totally spaced it out. We didn't know where this reaction came from. It was just a reaction. When he shows us where that came from, sometimes the wound is so deep that when he shows us, if we see that image, we latch onto it and it makes it harder for the healing. Because now we start to justify why we are. Why we are. Now we start getting into... Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. And it's harder for us to let go of it. So we don't always have to know where the I am not came from, what I've realized. What's more important, to know where it came from or just be free from it? Just be free from it. So that it changes who you are. So that you're not, because every time, remember last week, we're filtering everything through the I am nots, and then this person over here is filtering everything through their I am nots, so when I react, boom, I'm sending my I am not reaction to them. And now they're reacting to my I am not. So when I am able to start dealing with my I am nots, and they don't have, I don't have that reaction anymore, I'm not causing them to have a reaction anymore. And things change. If I am causing somebody to have a reaction because of my I am nots, I am contributing to the, this is Christ, and this is anti. So anytime I am contributing to the not, I am still ushering anti-Christ, anti-love into the universe. When we start listening to this, start walking <clears throat> to this, People around us start changing. Things start changing. Work starts changing. People we know, traffic starts changing. It starts changing. It's been a long journey and I got a long ways to go. But from where I was six or seven years ago, I've came a long ways. Um, I mean, I just had a few notes I wanted to cover before we jumped into it. Um, okay. Okay, let me, let me write this down here. There's a song, and it's, you know, it's a good song, and, and the, the singer, she's, she's singing about, you know, God, you're, all these good things that he does for me, all these good things that he does for me. And there's this one line that she does. What did I do to deserve a love like this? Lauren Daigle? Yeah, very good. Yeah, now, but that, 
right? I mean, that sounds so good. But now, what if I do this? How does that change the sentence? What did I do to deserve this? Changes a lot in that sentence. Makes you feel unloved. Yes. So because what's this about? This is about deserve and I deserve. I deserve. That's how subtle the I am nots are. They roll right through us and we're so used to looking through our I am not glasses, we don't even realize we're walking in them. It's like, you've heard a story about um, the two fish in the fish bowl and the third fish comes swimming by, the old guy, the old fish, and he says, how's the water, gentlemen? And they go, water? What's water? It's because they're living in the water. They don't even know that they're living in water. So he says, how's the water? And they go, water? What's, what's water? But they're living in it. But they're so engrossed in it, they don't see anything else but that. That's how we get so caught up in the I am nots, we don't even realize that we are caught up in I am nots. So subtle. I am nots react out of fear. <coughs> I am responds out of love. I am not need control. Got to have control. That's the only way I can protect myself from more hurt. That's why it's out of fear. I am not is out of fear. And I got to protect myself from more hurt. So I respond that way. I am has freedom and trust. It's a big difference. Um, it, it, it's in our conversations that we don't even realize it. If I say, see, we can say, well, you know, it's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. We say, I am not upset. But that's a double negative. Really what you're saying is, I am upset, but I'm trying to talk myself out of it. That's what you're saying. I am upset, so we start changing our vocabulary. Instead of saying, I am not upset, we say, I am love. I am forgiving. I am positive, 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 positive. Otherwise, we're just negating things. And we think, just like this song, we think that's such a powerful statement until we see that it's all about what I deserve. And what this song really says, that song really says separation. It's not union. That's not union with God. That's not one with God. If I had a bowling ball up here and I accidentally dropped it, What's the first response? Move your toes, right? Move it. And now my foot doesn't go, what did I do to deserve a love like this? Because my foot knows that we're one. I'm protecting my feet and my feet get me around. We're in union with each other. We are one body, not separate. My foot's not saying, what did I do to deserve a love like this? That is how subtle the I am nots are. And we are so wrapped in them, we don't even realize we're wrapped in them. So powerful. Okay. That was a quick recap from last week. Now. <coughs> now let's start on our piece of hip hop or handout. Okay, have we got their handouts? Did I? Yeah. Well, it's because I figured you were going to need to. Uh, <laughs> I'll scroll on first. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go ahead and go through here. Uh, everything in Abba's creation has pattern, rhythm, and purpose. We just don't always recognize it. You are a trinity of trinities and of greater importance to the cosmos, the universe, then you may realize you are body, soul, and spirit. So, here we go.
Okay. See, we're kind of we're kind of resembling the uh, this over here again, right? Body, soul, and spirit. So body, soul, spirit. So really easily we can say we know spirit is father, son, and spirit. Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. Now we get into the soul. The soul is your will, your emotions, and your mind. What you think, how you feel about what you think, and what you're going to do about what you think. Right? What you think, how you feel about it, and what you're going to do about it. You doing it right there, Trevor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, this is what now we're going, okay, so I can kind of understand that, you know, mind, will, and emotions, father, son, spirit. Now we get to the body. How can the body be trinity? Right? How's the body trinity? Well, <clears throat> individual, you are an individual. That's a P, not an X, by the way. Not only are you an individual, you are part of humanity. Or you humanity. Why are you humanity? You are a part of humanity. Now, not only are you an individual and a part of the human species, you are a part of creation. So you are a trinity inside, or you are a trinity, the, the, the trinity is the trinity inside of a trinity, inside of a trinity, inside of the trinity. There is no separation here. What did I do to deserve a love like this? That's the Father, Son, and Spirit inside of you. Father, Son, and Spirit outside of you, walking and working with you. John 14, 20. Does anybody have that one yet? By the time we get to week six, you got to know what John 14, 20 is. John 14, 20 is this right here. In that day, you are going to realize that I am in you and you are in me. I am in the Father and you are in me. That is inclusion, that is union, that is not you are over there and you love me from over there and I don't know why you love me from over there. That is dropping the ball and ball and you're moving your foot and it was the whole body working together. The, the foot's not telling the knee, wow, what did you do, how did you save me? You know, why, what did I ever do to you that you're going to save me that way? You know? It's, it's the body. It's understanding the body, your body. So let's continue reading. You, your being is a makeup of the Trinity, inside of a Trinity, inside of a Trinity, inside of the Trinity. So that's John 14, 20. That is right here inside of this, while they are also inside of you. That's what that is. It is good. That really is good. Because then you start seeing this, and you start seeing this, and you start realizing that, yeah, here's my body, and here's my soul, and I have Holy Spirit, Father, and Son inside of me, and I have Holy Spirit, Father, and Son on the outside of me. I am never alone. I am never going through this battle by myself. 
The only time I think it, I'm by myself is when I am in my I am not language saying, what did I do to deserve a love like this? What did I do to deserve you? And the Father, Son, and Spirit are saying, we're right here with you the whole time. We're right here. We love you because we love us. We love you because we love us. Okay. Let's keep going. Genesis 1, 26 through 27. And this is the NIV. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind, humanity, in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That word image is shadow and shape. Now, shadow and shape. We, we did some uh, the first week and some more last week. And when we get into... The second journey through this, uh, part two, as we go through part two, which is coming up in a few weeks, we're going to start over, but we're going to go and cover a lot that we didn't cover. But I talked about the Son is the exact image of the Father. The Son, you've seen all those verses, right? Colossians, he was made, Hebrews 1, he was made in the image of the Father. This is the reflection, he is the reflection, this is the shadow, the image. They are reflecting each other. This is the mirror. He is mirroring the Father. So that's the shadow and the image. Um, you guys want to take a little side trip? Okay, don't be brought any stones or rocks with them. They're going to toss at me. I brought bread. Okay. <laughs> More bread? That's a surprise if it's hard. Okay. <laughs> so, let us... Make man or mankind in our image. Right? There's an us, there's an hour, and mankind is made in that image of us and our. And if we go on to read, and he said, and he made them male and female. Which tells me. Us and our are male and female. That's exactly what that says. So, and even if you were to um, look at Hebrew scripture and go back all through all the whole Old Testament, all the Hebrew, Holy Spirit, the Spirit is Ruach, which is female. It has a female to it. Um, wisdom. Um, you know, like a mother hen, the Holy Spirit watches over like a mother hen. You can go back and start with the Old Testament. There's a lot of reference to a female in this Godhead. And then we have Father, and then we have Son, but God is actually more than male or female. So don't get hung up on that. But don't get hung up on God can't be female. Don't get hung up on that either. Because I'm telling you, right there it says, if he divided mankind into male and female, and mankind is the us and the our, it's right there. But don't get that hung up on it and don't let it distract you. And just, just know that uh, God's got a female side. A nurturing mother. Think about a nurturing mother. That's Holy Spirit is so nurturing and loving. Okay. That was a side note. Just for fun. Right? Just little things. For fun. We doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Ecclesiastes 3.11 He has made everything beautiful, beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. He has set eternity in the human heart. 
He has set eternity. And that heart isn't like your do -do 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 -do. That heart is, has to do with the middle. In the middle of you. He has put eternity in the middle of you. And there's only one eternal. That is Father, Son, and Spirit. So we come back over here. He's put eternity in the heart. In the middle. So these two are resembling. And now you see God is in you. Deeper in you than all of your scubula. You know what scubula is? It's Greek for crack. <laughs> but they didn't use crack. It was the actual the other word. <laughs> so scubula. I like that. You can say it. Nobody knows what you're saying. <laughs> scubula. You <laughs> piece Okay. <laughs> Are we tracking okay? You're starting to see and then mind emotions, creation, individual. So at the start of this, I said, you are more important to the cosmos than you realize. And that is true because you are a part of creation with a will that is made in the image. No other creature in creation is made in the image of them and he gave you a will I heard George McDonald he put it this way which I thought was just very impressive but you got to catch up on it he said and the thinker I mean and the thought became a thinker a thought becomes a thing right it becomes something it starts as a thought and then it becomes a chair it becomes something created. It becomes something manufactured. It becomes something built. But it starts as a thought. Our phones all started with Star Trek. Flip the doo -doo. But it started with a thought. Our phones started as a thought. We started as a thought. And then we were a thought that became a thinker. Meaning we have thoughts. Meaning, we have the power to make things too. Okay. Side. John 7, 37 through 38. Then on the most important day of the feast, the last day, I'm on page 2, top left hand. Uh, Jesus stood up and shouted to all the crowds, All you thirsty ones, come to me, come to me and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. And this is the Passion Translation. And he broke it down with little footnotes. The footnote said, rivers of living water will flow from his throne within. Where is his throne? Within you. Within you. His throne is within you, and the rivers of living water are flowing from within you. It's not up there somewhere that we're going to get to someday in the sweet by and by. It's in you. You are more important to the cosmos than you realize because His throne, everywhere you go, you take the throne of God with you. Everywhere you go, you are manifesting the throne of God. Now, important to remember, uh, let's look at Revelation 22.1. I was going to go there, but since we're there. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Revelation 22.1, NIV. And he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and the Lamb of God. The river coming from the throne. See, we're, we're, we're thinking <clears> that <throat> heaven up and out, and there's his throne. Jesus said, what did Jesus say? When they tell you the kingdom of God is here or that it's over there, he said, don't listen to them. Because the kingdom of God is where? Within you. That's what the kingdom of God is within you. But we get so caught up only seeing with I am not eyes, we don't realize that it's there. We see with I am not eyes, and so we don't know that the kingdom of God is there. And we think, oh, 
it's snuffed out, it's just not, not powerful, it's not doing anything, but when we get there, then it'll be something. It's already there. You know, you've got to go through the darkness to get to the light. Mm -hmm. You've got to go through, okay, I'm going to put it this way. You've got to go through hell mm -hmm. to find the light. Now, another side note, all right? I'm going to throw out another side note on that. I love doing this. Right? Hades. And that's what we, we call hell, right? We call that hell. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of Hades shall not prevail. This is a Greek word, ha, which is a negative or not. And adies, which is to observe. So what is Hades? The darkness. Can't see. Can't see. So when he talked to um, Peter and he said, you know, blessed are you, Bar Jonah, son of, son of Jonah, uh, for that was revealed to you, did not come from man. When he said, when he was asked the disciples, who do you say I am? And, or who do, the, who do the people say I am? They go, oh, some say you're Elijah, some say John the Baptist, some say big prophet. And he said, well, who do you say I am? <clears throat> and Peter said, you are the Messiah. And then Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, son of Simon, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. This, that, that did not come from this. He said, But my Father in heaven revealed it to you. He said, And so on this rock I will build my church, Ecclesia. Ecclesia. The source, Alessia, sent out from the source. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail. What's a gate do? A gate keeps things in or it keeps things out. So because of this revelation that came to Peter from the Father on who the Messiah is, it didn't come from an external source. It wasn't something that was fed to him to figure that out. It came from within him to figure that out. And Jesus said, blessed are you, because you've tapped in to this, what the Father's doing. And so on that, I'm going to build my ecclesia, ek source. Ecclesia sent out, sent out from the source, sent out from the source. And the gates, the gates that cause you not to see shall not prevail, because you've tapped into this, the darkness no longer can keep you out or keep you in. You now have access to leave the darkness or walk into the darkness. You're not bound by what the darkness tells you anymore. That's pretty powerful and a long way around it. And that's not in our notes. <laughs> Just some fun stuff. So where is the kingdom located? Yeah. Within you. You know what? And within you, and within you, and within you, and within you. And you, and you, the kingdom is located within you. And you too. <laughs> and you? Hey, me. And you? The kingdom is located within us. Now Luke 17, 20 through 21. This is the Young's literal translation. And having been questioned by the Pharisees, when the reign of God doth come, he answered them and said, The reign of God doth not come by, with observation, nor shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For all the reign of God is within you. And I picked this translation because they actually, they actually did the translation correct. All the other translations say the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. And it's actually the reign. And, and we talked, I don't know if you guys remember, about the difference between kingdom. And that actually means reign. R-E-I-G-N. And to reign is not to rule over... To reign is to be the source of everything you need for food, clothing, protection, shelter. Is to be the source of everything you need for life. So, when he says, the, the, kingdom, the reign of God doth not come from with observation, nor shall they say, lo here or lo there. For lo, the reign of God is within you. The source 
of everything that you need for life is coming from within you. Powerful stuff. This stuff has been right here in the scriptures this whole time, and it's taken me 50 years to find it. To, to, to just stop listening and say, no, wait a minute, why do I believe that? Why do they tell me that's what it is? And I'm not going to walk away and go, well, they said it, so it must be true. I'm going to walk away and go, well, let me go find out what that says. Let me go find out what that really means. When it says kingdom, what does it really mean when it says kingdom? It means reign is what it means. It means that's the source of everything I need for life right there. So we have all these I am nots that try and keep us in Hades, right? The darkness. But this, the reign of God is within us. And it's on the outside of us. You can't get more surrounded than that. I mean, if you were going to defeat the enemy, what do you do? You get inside their camp, and you get outside the camp, and you attack from both directions at the same time. That's how you win the battle. That's how the I am not, the anti I am, is taken care of. When we start looking here for our answers, instead of chasing, 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 well, maybe it's over there, or maybe it's over there, or maybe it's at that location, or, you know, and we do. We chase it because we're wanting the goosebumps. We're wanting the stuff when it's right here. Let's keep going because I'm excited and I want to go to some other stuff here. <laughs> here we are, Hebrews 10, 11 through 18. And I day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. That's important. Take away. It's important to realize that. Take away, not covered. Take away, not covered. Covered, taken away. That is very important to realize that, what Jesus did. He took it away. He didn't cover it. He took it away. You're not just covered by Him. He took it away so that it's no longer a part of you. Took it away. Sacrifice set, um, uh, which could never take away sins. But then, but when this priest, I'm talking about Jesus, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, how many? One. One sacrifice. He has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. And here's what I found interesting. Go back up to that verse, um, verse 13. Since that time, he is doing what? He waits. And yet what are we doing? Waiting. Waiting. We're waiting. He's waiting for us. We're waiting for him. He's like, I've already done it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to go and destroy the anti-Christ. Wow. You do that. That's the last enemy. That's the enemy. That's his enemy. And he's waiting for us to start tapping in here. And letting it bring, instead of blaming it, letting it bring healing to all these wounds so that we stop. He's waiting for us to expose our true identity. Right! Ooh, He's God. waiting for the waiting for the sons of God. Another verse says, waiting for the sons of God, which means creation, all of humanity, waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. Yes. Which is our true identity. That's why identity takes us to destiny. That's why this class on identity is so valuable. If we could get more people involved in realizing it's not about chasing things. It's about getting to know right here 
right here. It's about sitting in these chairs right here. It's sitting here in a face-to-face -face with Abba. No agenda. See, when I have an agenda, here's things that need fixed. And here's my agenda. Here's my agenda. God, that needs fixed. As long as this agenda is in my hands, I am not in a face-to-face -face with him. We're going to get into that in a couple weeks. How powerful this face-to-face -face is. That's where transformation happens. Here's where information happens. This is where transformation happens. Transformation over information. You can memorize all the scripture you want in the world. You can quote it from front to beginning. But if it's not transforming you, put it down because it's not doing any good at all. And if you're using it to beat up other people because they're not changing, because you're upset because you're not changing, put it down. Walk away. Get to this. Start getting to this and destroy this. Then the world is changed. Then the world is changed. Okay, here we go. Down here, uh, verse 16. This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts. Now go down to the bottom there where it says laws. See, this, this has got me too. This is really good stuff. Laws is namos, from the primary word nemo, to parcel out especially food or grazing to animals. See, I always thought it was the Ten Commandments that were written on my heart or on my mind. No, it is a parceling out. I will put, I will parcel out a place. I will parcel out a place where I reign. What does rain mean? Mm -hmm. To supply everything you need for life. I will parcel out a place. I will parcel out a place in their hearts and in their minds where I can reign, where I can provide everything they need for healing, for health, for sustenance, for security, everything they need. It's when I will put my laws upon their hearts and their minds so they won't sin against me, it's coming into this so you start having the correct identity. Sin isn't about a moral error. It's about an identity error. When we have a wrong identity, we do wrong things. Out of the overflow of the heart, the actions come forth. I can try and change my actions, but if in here hasn't changed, two weeks later I'm back here again. That's right. Nothing's changed here. It's got to change here. It's got to change here. It's got to change here. Because when it starts changing here, it starts changing mind, emotions, and will. All of this starts to change. That's when change happens. That's when we start destroying this anti. When we know that he is reigning as our source, his kingdom is in me. His reign is in me. I need to step into it and start spending time here uh, letting him transform me. In this, in these chairs, and that's so why I always do chairs, because it's always easy to give the example. In these chairs, sitting in a face-to-face, -face, no agenda, relationship of union and oneness, transformation happens on a molecular level. It's not what I memorized. It just starts happening in me. It starts happening in my emotions, in my mind, in my will. It wasn't that I memorized something and I can quote it. The change happened from within and it started changing my emotions. I don't react that way anymore. I don't know why. It wasn't that I memorized something that said, don't do this. It just, it, it doesn't. My emotions have changed. What I want to do changes. We all know the commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not whatever, whatever. And then they kept adding more. And it pretty soon it went from 10 to 700. Uh, if you think that's bad, we've got thousands in this country. And the more laws we make, the worse it gets. Why? Because if we can post it, they can memorize it, they'll stop doing it, right? No. Not till this happens. When this happens, that's when the change happens. That's why I want to get into prison ministry. I want to start going to the source. Let's stop telling them to stop doing it, slapping their hands and saying stop, and let's start changing identity. 
Because identity takes us to destiny. Remember, destination is the place we end up. Destiny is the path we take getting there. And when our identity changes, the steps we take change. Our mind, our will, and the emotions change. And we start walking different. We don't know when it happened. We sit in this and we don't know when it happened. We don't know what memory got fixed, what hurt got healed. We just know it happened. And things are different. Okay. We, got, we doing okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Keep it up. <laughs> okay, Matthew 6, 5 through 8. Page 2, right hand side. Okay, this is good too. Okay. <laughs> Whenever you pray, be sincere and not like the pretenders who love the attention. This is passion. You guys ever read the Passion Translation? No, I like it. I really like it. He only has New Testament Psalms and Proverbs. I really like it. He gets really to a love relationship. He understands union a lot more in the Passion Translation. I know there were some groups of Christians that said it's you know it's a heretic thing. No, he when I started looking at the words that he's using and then looking up in the original Greek, he's very accurate on a lot of stuff he says. So it's a trustworthy translation. I like it because it really speaks about the love of the Father and the relationship that Jesus has. So here we go, Matthew 6, 5 through 8. Uh, that was your little Bible class, I guess. A translation, I don't know. I love it you smile. You always make me smile. You smile. Whenever you pray, be sincere and not like the pretenders who love the attention they receive while praying before others in the meetings and on street corners. Believe me, they've already received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with Father God, praying to Him in secret. And your Father who sees all you do will reward you openly. When you pray, there is no need to repeat empty phrases, praying like the Gentiles do. For they expect God to hear them because of their many words. There is no need to imitate them, since your Father already knows what you need before you ask Him. What did I do to deserve a love like this? Right? That's that separation. He already knows what you need. He is already in union with you. We're just not in union with Him. And so here was the, here was the thing. When, when 2020, when the, when the uh, COVID hit and everything got shut down and you couldn't leave, and then there was all kinds of uproar about, I have a God-given right to worship. And I remember that. And I remember thinking, you're right. It's right here. This is where you got to get. This, this is that law. This is that place inside of you that, that nobody can get to. That is the place he set up for you to worship. Not a building. Now you're trying to be, I have rights. And I, my first thought was, did God give us rights? Did he really give us? I have God-given right. Did God give us rights or did the United States give us rights? I do not remember reading anywhere in Scripture that God gave you a right. You have the right. I just have not read it. I have looked. I have not found. You have a right. You have a right to love me. And let me tell you this. I have put my law in their heart. This, in your innermost being, is a place that nobody gets to but you and them. Father, Spirit, Son. The devil can't get you there. The accuser can't get you there. Nobody can get there. Uh, now, they can attack here, but nobody gets there but you and God. That's your innermost place. See, a lot of translations, they'll say that. Go to your innermost closet. And you think, well, there's got to be a closet in my house. What's the most closet that i got to go find where I can pray? Michael, I think he says that for us to go in secret and pray. Because I think even the enemy can hear our prayers when we speak them out loud. Oh, probably, yeah. Our Heavenly Father can read our yeah. minds and our hearts. Yeah. So we can speak to him in our minds. Right. And the enemy can't hear. Nope. You know? I think maybe that's part of that. Yep. That's why he put this place yeah. in you. That nobody gets yeah. to by him. He's the only one. 
that goes there. He's, he's always sitting there waiting for us to show up. He's the one that's always sitting there waiting for us to say, ah, I need some papa time. I need some papa time right here. Yes. He's always there. So yeah, you have a, you have a God given right, but it's right here. That's where it's at. It's in this spot right here. And no man written law can take that away from you. No. No. Nobody. Nobody can take that away from you. I don't care where. I think about the Romans, the first century, and uh, those Christians, they got thrown into the lions. Or they got burnt. They were Roman candles. You guys know what a Roman candle is, right? Roman candle is they would take Christians and they would hang them on the street, side of the street, douse them with oil and light them on fire for street lights. Wow. Christians burning were street lights for the Romans. And yet those Christians bravely walked to go face that. Why? Because they knew this. They were in the air. They weren't caught up in all of this out here, and I have a God-given right, and I can just see them telling Caesar that, I got a God-given right to worship if I want <laughs> That's to. That's where Jesus was yeah. during his crucifixion. Right. He was in there. Come exactly. On. Therefore, the joy set before him, mm -hmm. he endured the cross. Ooh. Yes, and that was, that was me, like I told you last week, walking the trail and saying, but it hurts. And him saying, only time it's hurting is when you're focusing on self. Yes. When you look past self to hear, there is no pain. There is no hurt. There's no fear of rejection. There's no fear of failure. There's no fear of abandonment. There's no fear here because this is perfect love. Fear has to do with punishment. Is what the I am nots are always about. Punishment, punishment, punishment. And you will never be brought to perfection with fear. That's why these, these churches that try and scare you with hell to get you to turn around, you'll never, you, that may make you move in a direction, but it's not going to bring you to perfection. Perfection only happens in love. That's in 1 John 4. That only in love are we brought to perfection. That's right there. That's coming here. Because when we come here, this starts changing. That starts changing. Say what? Comes from within. Yes. Yes. Altruistic. You guys heard that word before? Altruism? Altruistic? We were created in this, right? So, Father, Son, Spirit. We were created in this image. Altruistic is always outflow. Never about what's coming back in. It's always about outflow. It's always about love. Everything this Father does is for the Son and the Spirit. Never for self. Everything that this Son does is for Father and Spirit and creation. Never for self. Everything the Holy Spirit does is always for everybody else. It's not, it's not even... Well, if I do this and they do good, then I feel good because they did good. There's still a reward there. This is, I'm going to do for them even when they spit in my face, even when they hang me on a cross, even when they, when they torture me. That's altruistic. That's doing it because of love, not because of something in return. And we were created in this image. Yes. That means inside of you is altruism. You were created to be full love going out. To take care. That's why it's more blessed to give than receive. Yeah. Yeah. When you're giving to people, man, there's such a joy in that. You know? But the hard part is receiving from somebody else. But if we don't receive when they're giving, then we're taking their joy away. So that's that relationship. You were created in that image with altruism inside of you. But we get so hurt and abused and abandoned by earthly and, and people and things around us. We get focused on this instead of on this. And we lose our altruism. We lose it because we start becoming defensive. We become protective. We start guarding ourselves. 
and we're afraid. You have to be vulnerable to love. You have to be. If you're guarded, you can't love. You have to be, you have to be willing to be hurt to love. These three, Jesus says, I'll do the whole thing every single day for one more. I will keep doing it. And I will keep doing it. And I will keep suffering because of the love so powerful. Okay. Where we stop? Um, in your inmost chamber. That's right. If brother or so pray. Who wants to say that? Pras yo kom That's what that. That's the Greek word for pray. Now, it's interesting. Remember, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And that that word with it means face to face. That word is pros. That means face to face. Well, what's the beginning of this word? Pros. Pros yokome. So prayer is face to face. That's why sitting in this chairs in this face to face relationship, that's prayer. Having a list of things that I need done, that's agenda. Sitting here and just talking in a face to face with Father, that's prayer. That's what change. He already knows what you need. Right? Didn't, didn't Jesus just say that? Mm -hmm. He already knows what you need. So ask him for all the things you need. He already knows that. Mm -hmm. But you know what he wants? He wants to sit with you and just, just have a face-to-face. -face. Just have a face-to-face -face and just enjoy your company. You know? It's like, let's go fishing. Yeah, let's go fishing. You know? And he says, yeah, let's go fishing. And we go fishing with him. And just, just talk and just enjoy him. But we, we make it this ritual thing. And yeah. Uh, oh, here. Do we have a God given right to worship? Uh, yes, but no one can destroy this, his throne because it's within you. Oh, here's, here's a phrase that came to me when I was uh, in, in, in prep time. controls you, when this is dead, instead of trying to protect self, trying to protect ego, then there is no more death. Why? That's why those early Christians in Rome could just march off to go face the lions. Because they were already dead. And they knew that for the joy set before them, Death wasn't this obstacle to be feared. It was something to be running towards. Because they knew on the other side of that, when this no longer held them captive, they were finding their freedom. They knew that death was freedom, is what they knew. They weren't caught up with afraid of it. You know, I have got to get going here. Not me, but I got to get going on this next thing that I want to cover before. Are you going? No, because. <laughs> Time for takeover. Quite the ending. Oh, quite the ending. That's <laughs> no, I really want to cover this because this is important that you go home with today. This the next verse here Acts 17, 22 through 28. And I mean, Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens. So who's he talking to? People of Athens. <laughs> People of Athens. Which, were they believers? Were they Jews? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. People of Athens. And I got a question for you. What's a pagan? A horse. 
<laughs> That's a Pegasus. Pegasus. <laughs> Isn't that a, uh, like a worldly person? Pagan is actually a word that means other nation. Oh, okay. That's all it means. Foreigner. It's another nation. But since, since the Israelites were the chosen nation, if you weren't an Israelite, you were a pagan. You were a pagan and so that's how you got lumped in as an evil nation. Because you were pagan. You weren't the chosen nation. But since Christ, it doesn't matter. We're all pagans. Just other nations. Okay. Another little tidbit. People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. Okay. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this, this inscription, to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives how many? Everyone. Everyone life and breath and everything else. From how many? One, One man. He made how many? All, All, All the nations. nations. And they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Okay. Don't flip page. Let's just stay here for a minute. We may, we may finish up right here. This is good stuff. Just, he says that last line, verse 28, for in him, we're back to our chairs, for in him we live and move and have our being. And he's talking to a people that were ignorant of what they even worshipped, to an unknown God. We don't even know who we're worshipping, but we're worshipping. And he says, yeah, you're ignorant, so let me just tell you who you're worshipping, the unknown God. This is him, and in him we live and move and have our being in Him. In Him, we have our being. Now, let me back. This is, this is going to be really fun. If you're going to hang with me here, um, we're going to stay right here on this. Um, verse 26. From one man He made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Okay. It's time for an illustration the best I can. Okay. This. Here, let's do it this way. From one man. I was going to draw a stiff person, but. <laughs> from one man, he made all the nations. And marked out their times and their territories. <coughs> from one man came, or from, from Adam came sons, and then Abraham, Joseph, from one man all the rest of humanity and he marked out their times and boundaries these are years gone by this is a timeline that's going towards the future from one man he marked out their times and their boundaries where they're going to be which means, here we are in 2022, and we have all the people, and all of us here in this room, all those thousands of years ago, we're right in here. And then we came into being. We came into the seen realm. They would go to a to the, a, a, a gravesite, and they always have you know 
1920 to 2020. And there's always a dash in between the time they came into the scene realm and the time they left the scene realm. They didn't leave. They just aren't seen. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. They are still here. We just don't see them. Their times and their boundaries have changed. So, all of humanity continues to unfold as we continue on. And then even after our time and boundary cease, more are still going to pop up. And, and what's really cool is like, okay, um, okay, here, my time and my boundary. Out of me can my daughter. Out of her came two more grandkids. Those grandkids were in me before they were in her because she was in me. We can keep backing this right on up and pretty soon we see that Father Abraham, right? We came from Father Abraham. We backed it all the way up, Adam. And then Adam was split into two, so then That's a skirt. <laughs> oh, it's a big leaf. Yeah, it's a big leaf. So, see how, how it just keeps splitting and it keeps going and it keeps going. And when we start looking at history through, through the Old Testament, and we say, why did God do things that way? Why? Yeah, I had one. I had one. God has a plan. And he needed to find a way to get down here, we're not in 22, but you know, down here, he had to find a way to get to this place where this happened. Where the son died on the cross. So out of that, and if you look at the genealogy through your scripture, it always says, begat, 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 which means they came out of, they came out of, they came out of, they came out of, but their time they were in there, they just hadn't came into the scene realm yet. And so he had to preserve, as I like to say with the Old Testament, all those crazy things that happened in the Old Testament, that was Father God building banks on the river to make sure that he had a line that would bring this. And that's why he talks about out of the root of Jesse, See, his, his great-great-grandfather, from, from Abraham, Moses, that line keeps coming through so he could be, and now there's, there are other pagans, right? There are pagans out here, other nations, but they all still came from here. They came into the scene realm, but God marked out their times and their boundaries to bring it to here. And then when this happened, what happened in Christ, and Paul talks about that, from one man, what happened in Christ changed everything. It changed everything. And maybe we'll get into, we'll get around to, um, I'll start talking more about how that changes everything. This, what happened right here with Jesus on the cross, and we're going to get into it in a couple weeks. We're going to talk about what happened on, next week. We talk about how well do you know uh, Jesus' Father. We're going to talk about what happened on the cross was Jesus reaching into the bottom of the sock, all the way down, grabbing the very tiptoe, reaching in the, grabbing all the way to the very tiptoe, and pulling everything right back out, pulling it right side out, because it got turned inside out. It got, this was life, not this. So we had to go to the center of it and pull everything back out, turned it back around. That was death. Adam was death. Jesus is life. He came to destroy death. Jesus is the beginning. This is this is the first Adam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This Jesus is the last Jesus Adam. This is the beginning. 
Yeah, he's well, Jesus at the beginning and the end, but yeah. yeah. So he came in and he had to turn all this back around. Yeah. If we got into to First Corinthians, Second Corinthians twelve. Man, I don't remember exactly where it's at. But it says, and I'll find it. But it says that um, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And that says cosmos. Reconciling the cosmos to himself. He was not reconciling himself to the cosmos. He was reconciling a creation that had turned from him. Remember, they started looking at the tree and she saw that its fruit was good. And so she had turned from this relationship to pursuing something else. And she turned away because what you behold, you become one with. And if you got these idols, and you're holding on to these, and you're staring at these, you're becoming one with that, and there's no life in that. You've got to turn back around toward the source of life. So Jesus came to reconcile humanity back to himself, to, to take us by the head and go, whoop, and get us focused again. All those times through the Old Testament, they would have the offerings. They would always have this sacrifice offering, this sacrifice offering. All of those were little marks across here to keep us turning back to him. Because we would start wandering our way, we'd start doing different things and start worshiping idols. And he'd say, okay, well, if you're going to do sacrifices and stuff, then let me do it so that you're facing me when you do it. Let me do this so that you will turn to face me. Because as long as you keep turning to face me, we can continue this relationship. If you continue to turn away, you're going to lapse back into non-being. That's a uh, um, uh, Athanasius thing. Third place. Maybe maybe we'll talk about Athanasius at some point. Really awesome dude. Um, the, the the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God the Father, Creator of heaven and earth, Maker of all the seen and unseen. That Athanasius is like 21 or 22 years old, and he was on the Nicene Council that put that together. The 26 Bible books you have in your New Testament. He is the one that said. Those need to go into that. Those are the canonized ones. He's the one that put the New Testament together. And then everybody else just agreed with him because he knew. Um, so anyway, the good stuff. But I just totally got sidetracked. But this, I hope this helps to understand that even, even your life is a dash in the scene realm. You came from and you will return to him. You came from him. Okay. We're going to go to this last verse. Um, go to page four. Bottom of the, of the left-hand side, Psalms 139. Psalms 139. This is David. NIV. For you created my inmost being. What? <laughs> what? I already erased all that, but he created my inmost being. Right? He created my inmost being. Right there. He, even David saw it. He created my inmost being. Did you find it? Page four? It's at the top. The top page top four, right. Four, right. Yeah. Top right in the corner. Uh, I know. Oh, oh, oh. I know, because when they printed it, their printer printed different than my printer. Oh. So, okay, good. I'm glad you said that. So it's on the top of page, page four. 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 Oh, okay, right. good. Good. <laughs> it's still, it's still, still the same thing, just didn't print the same place mine did. It's alright. Psalms 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. What? Mm. Wow! Woo. <laughs> I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. What? book is he talking about? His book of life. The book of life. Yeah. And all this time we've been fighting to get our name written in the book of life. And David said, before I was born, my name was written there. Because we can get our name blotted out of the book of life. We can. 
can't we? I don't know. I don't know. What was that? Get our names blotted, blotted out of the book of life. I've heard that, but I haven't found that. Yeah. I have searched for that, but I haven't found that. So I'll have to do some more search on that and find that out. Good. Um, but I have heard that. But I've also heard that you got to do something to get your name in there in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> and we just read what David said. That it's all my days were ordained before one of them began. Your name wouldn't be blotted out because it's your seen time. God said in the book of life, you will be here from here to here. Oh. Yeah. So how, can, how do you blot that out? Well, but does we're God, all here. God knows before we're knitted in our mother's womb whether we are going to believe him or not. If we, if he knows that we will have nothing to do with him, will we not be, will we be written in the book of life? I don't know if anything can be added to the book of life. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. I just know what David said, that before <laughs> one of them began, my name was already in there. Book of life. Yeah. Yeah. But see, God can just say who, who is going to be written in the book of life. Because he knows. Right? But we also know that from one man came everybody. Came everybody. Yeah. And, and like Robert said, that that is this when the book began? I don't know. No. I don't know. I really don't know. It says right there in Revelations 3, 5, the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. Re that, Revelation what? Revelations 3, 5. 3, 5. Yeah, so he now I'll have to talk about blotting. Yeah, these. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to look to see what the original language said. Okay. Because a lot of times we read scripture and it's got a bent to it based on what they're trying to prove. We, we can go back, like the word repent. The word repent. The word repent is a is is metanoia. Doesn't the word repent mean to regret? Turn back away from our sins. Who? Well, let me let's get the full story. The word repent, it's been translated, is actually metanoia. That's the original Greek word, metanoia. Well, when when Rome said, okay, we're gonna make Christianity the the Roman religion. So everybody doesn't get crucified no more or get, you know, uh, harassed, but you got to be a Christian now. So at that point, it started, it got translated into Latin, right? And the king, when it was being translated into Latin, wanted to make sure that they were in good friendship with the government. That's when Christianity, the church, and the government got into bed together which was always a mistake because now it lost its originality. It was now about the government and taking care of the government. The government said, listen, we're protecting you. So now you make sure this works out good for us. Build our big cathedrals, all this kind of stuff. So they translated it from metanoia, which is actually meta, which is change. Noia, nous, which is mind. So metanoia is changed mind. That's what metanoia. But they translated it repent. And pent comes from pentanir, which has to do with feel remorse and regret and make penance, make payments to pay for that. And now to make it really good, let's put a re on there so that you constantly keep doing it. So you're constantly repeating because they know this right here is going to constantly be bothering you and you're going to constantly be reacting out of that and you're going to be going in there and you're going to be saying your prayers and you're going to be bringing your two coins in there to drop off for the penance. That's why Martin Luther, our, uh, yeah, Luther, he did uh, with, the, with the Lutherans, he went in and said, it is by grace you are saved and not of works. And he nailed his thesis to the door of the church because they were so involved in this, which said, you know what? It doesn't matter how you act as long as you pay for it. And then you'd have people come in and say, you know what? I, I sinned yesterday, so here's my five bucks, and I'm, I'm going to sin tomorrow, so here's another five for tomorrow. I'll just pay in advance for what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. And that's where repent came from. So, and you know what? To this day, to this day, 
It is still translated to repent in all of our translations, except for the Passion. I think he said change mind. Well, why are they? It's not even a Greek word. It's a Latin word. But it has control. They want it their way. That's uh, right down <laughs> Exodus 32 and 33 also for you. Exodus 42 33? Yeah. It says, The Lord replied to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. He says it again in Exodus. Yeah. Oh, the Lord. Yeah. I'll look through it. See what those are, too. Yeah. Thank you. So, that's why I have to look. That's why when I started, when I stopped just believing everything I was told, why do I believe that? And started doing the research, started going, wow, and we just, we just walk right through it. We just walk right into it and put up with it and do it. And then we wonder why we're in this constant cycle of problem. No constant. Change. Constantly needing a revival. No. Constantly needing a revival. When this changes, we don't need revival. Because we are revived. But, revival. Here's how I see it with revival. If I have a heart attack, and EMTs come in and they pop me back to life, they revive me, but I don't do any changes to my health, guess what happens in six months? I'm going to need another revival. We have to keep chasing revival after revival after revival. Whereas, maybe the revival was good to jumpstart my heart to realize I got a problem, but now it's what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Stop chasing it and start changing. Right. Start metanoia, not repenting. Stop going back and paying penance and penance and penance and penance and have a changed mind. That's where the change happens. Amen. All right. Why don't you close this in prayer? Okay. Okay. And gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this night that you've given us a fellowship. Thank you for allowing your Holy Spirit to be here with us to guide us through these teachings tonight, Lord. I ask and pray that you guide each and every one of us through this week and see to it that we make it home safe tonight, Lord. And Lord, just touch, touch each and every one of our hearts and, and help us to shed the I am not yes. from around our souls. Lift those scales from our eyes, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Fantastic. Well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Fine. 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 <laughs>